Hey everybody, I'm Connor, this is Doug, and welcome to Could This Be More of a Podcast? Yes, Doug, this is the one where we talk about friends. In this very special episode, we'll investigate the financial solvency of each of the friends to determine once and for all how they can afford those apartments. How much does a trans monster make anyway? We'll also rank each character based solely on their pseudonyms from Regina Falange to Miss Chenandler Bong. And oh my God, here comes the meat sweats because it's Thanksgiving and we're talking food. Specifically, we'll delve into some of Monica's most scrumptious recipes. Connor, Connor, you know what I love about Thanksgiving, going back for seconds. So how about we get a second, but obviously completely different and improvised on the spot introduction to the show. And obviously, let's keep that Friends theme going. Well, I guess I could try. Uh, <clears throat> all right. Hey, everybody. I'm Connor. This is Doug. And welcome to... Smelly Pod, Smelly Pod, a podcast dedicated to the dulcet tones of Miss Phoebe Buffet. In this episode, we'll celebrate the elegant simplicity of Smelly Cat, break down the complex chord structure of Crusty Old Man, and explore the claustrophobic poetry of Trapped in a Hotel Closet. Finally, we'll sing along Connor, with... Connor, I don't know how you do it, man. Happy Thanksgiving to you. This week, we're broadcasting from high above the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade route in Tim Watley's apartment. In fact, I'm looking down at the Woody Woodpecker balloon right now. It's being filled up by a bunch of volunteers. Wrong show, dude. That is a deep Seinfeld reference, and we're supposed to be talking about friends. You know, Joey wearing the turkey on his head, Rachel's many layered trifle. Speaking of Thanksgiving Day food, we asked Team Bethel to weigh in with their favorite dishes on the Thanksgiving table. We got a lot of great responses. Let's kick things off with Brian Lawfer. Hi, my name is Brian Lawfer. I'm Director of Assessment and Highly Capable Programs. My favorite Thanksgiving food is the classic green bean casserole that you can get from the back of those French onion cans. And we do a little substitution because my grandma didn't like mushrooms and nor did I, so we put cheese soup instead of mushroom soup. Highly recommend. This is Christy Rodriguez, the principal of Bethel High School. One of my favorite Thanksgiving foods is pie. My mom makes really great pie crust. I learned that early from her, but it doesn't matter if it's pumpkin pie, apple pie, mincemeat pie at Thanksgiving. That's what we do. This is Bethany Oki, principal at Frontier Middle School. My favorite Thanksgiving dish is a strawberry pretzel salad um, that my grandma used to make as we were growing up. And so it always brings back great memories from her and our childhood. My name is Kristen Matheny and I am the middle school Maptosa. My favorite Thanksgiving food is homemade stuffing because my grandpa made it every year and he taught me how to make it. Well, speaking of families, Doug, I was talking to your mom and dad last week and they were telling me about some of their favorite traditional Thanksgiving foods. I'm sorry, you were talking to my mom and dad last week? Yeah, I talk to them every week. Why do you talk to them every week? Well, maybe if you called more often, I wouldn't have to. But anyway, let's hear what they like for Thanksgiving. Pennsylvania Dutch fresh cranberry relish made from cranberries, pineapple, oranges, sugar, and possibly more sugar. My favorite Thanksgiving food is stuffing, but I can't wait to try Doug's Jiffy Lube stuffing. It sounds interesting. My favorite definitely has to be the carbohydrate special that is Hawaiian rolls. That last voice, my nephew, Logan, and thanks to my family for chiming in. I didn't know that was happening. Anyway, last week, Connor, you remember, we promised our listeners that if they wrote in their favorite Thanksgiving Day dishes, you would read them using celebrity impersonations, one of your strong suits. A promise is a promise, so I will do it. But we did get two, so I'm going to make you step up and give one of your own impersonations. I know you got it in you. This one comes from an anonymous Bethelonian who obviously doesn't want to be associated with this nonsense. And they said their favorite Thanksgiving food is not a turkey. When I was a little boy, I liked the pumpkin pie. Okay, kudos to you on that one, especially because that's a kindergarten cop reference, so it has a school tie to it, which I think our listeners will really appreciate. I have our second one here, all the way from Graham Elementary. Let me let me find my motivation. It's time to play the music. It's time to light the lights. Hi-ho, it's not easy being green, and that's why I appreciate the green bean casserole that my mom used to make. It's my favorite. Ah! That's a fabulous Ray Romano. <laughs> Well, everybody does love him. That's why I picked good old Ray Romano. Connor, I do have one final surprise for you here. We got one more email in, and I, I've hidden this one from you, so you're going to have to do this one off the cuff. Janice Sparley, she's over at North Star Elementary, and her favorite Thanksgiving food is Norwegian lefse. 
and she wants it done in the voice of Winston Churchill. Well, Doug, it's Lefsa first. I won't have you disparaging the name of my ancestral food. And I think I can do Winston Churchill. So. <clears throat> well, hello, Doug. It's Winston Churchill. My favorite Thanksgiving food is Norwegian Lefsa. Well, Connor, if the British Empire and its Commonwealth last for a thousand years, no one will say that this was their finest hour. Why don't you give it another shot? Okay, I thought that was pretty good, but how about this? <clears throat> that's not a knife, that's a lefsa. <laughs> I, I think that's Crocodile Dundee. Ah, I always get those confused. Okay, never mind. I don't think I have it. Okay. Anyway, Connor, you sat down with Chef Ben Witten. He is the culinary instructor over at the Pierce County Skills Center and has been for the past six years. And you started off your conversation asking him what got him into the kitchen in the first place. I actually started out in education. Uh, I got a master's degree in higher education. I wanted to work in colleges and universities. And then I kind of started to realize after working there that in some ways they didn't really serve our students as well and that there were other paths that kind of made sense. So I actually kind of ran away to Europe for a while and started getting reconnected to cooking when I was over there and started studying. And when I came back, I decided that I wanted to change my career and become a chef. So I went to culinary school. I actually studied in London for a while and then Providence, Rhode Island at Johnson Wales. And from there, I started really just hopping all over the place. I uh, moved out to Napa Valley to work at the French Laundry for a while, uh, down to San Francisco and was running some restaurants down there, up to Seattle, down to Portland, out to Philadelphia, to Olympia. So kind of all over the place doing some of those things. Um, in the process of doing that, I mostly was working in fine dining restaurants, doing pastry and desserts. I also did some catering, some private chefing, and then I did eventually go and work for a large national cooking equipment store, teaching classes to the public. And that really kind of got me back into the education side. So when I saw kind of what these skill centers were and what they were doing, that really kind of, I found this like perfect marriage for myself of this isn't that post-secondary education. This is giving kids a different path and actually setting up for careers. And I get to teach and cook at the same time. So it kind of was like that perfect fit. You obviously love cooking because you've done it as a career. What is it about teaching that kind of draws you in and keeps you coming back and excites you? Well, it's one of the things I discovered really in some of my cooking career is that I find kind of that constant pursuit of knowledge and inquisitiveness really crucial just to growth and development. So I've had the advantage of being able to kind of move around and go different places, try different things, experience new things. And every time I do, I just, I find myself growing and changing more. And I think the educational setting or the right educational setting can really provide that. Not just for myself, I find like working here, I grow all the time, but it's getting our students to see the benefit of that. One of the things I really see us doing here in our culinary program is not just training chefs. We have a lot of students who come in with interest in running food trucks and being in the hospitality industry, but we also have students who come in because they like to cook. And the beauty of it is cooking is so personal, so creative, and there's a lot of kind of passion and interest there that they can find these kind of interesting connections for themselves. And even if they don't go on to be chefs, it's an opportunity for them to learn how to be intrigued and how to ask questions and how to grow. So when they can take that out of here, they have those skills. And I think that's what's kind of really exciting about it. How would you describe the progress that your students make as they come through the culinary program? How much do they grow as chefs? I'm impressed every year, but I mean, it's like I'm re-impressed every year by some of the students. They come in and I mean, even from day one to the end of our first trimester, we go from them coming in and some of them we're showing them which size the pointy end of the knife to by the end of our first trimester, we usually host a holiday market where the students themselves research, develop, create, package, and sell their own concept for a shelf stable food product. And within a span of three months, they are kind of at a place that they're actually capable of doing that. By the end of the year, we'll, we've done projects in the past where they'll take a significant food issue to themselves, a world food issue, research it, come up with a thesis for it, and actually create a plate of food that defines what their thesis is and will serve it to the public. And they're having to fill out health department forms for, for serve food kind of out in a public space. They're doing the costing analysis of it. They're doing the marketing on it. They're doing all these kind of pieces to it, which is pretty incredible. And that's by the end of their first year. Second year when they're coming back, what we focus on a lot is some more of the management skills. So they really come into the kitchen as kitchen managers. They're actually directing other students, writing prep lists, doing money management, doing inventorying, all those pieces that are kind of managerial level things. 
And I imagine some of your students hope to use this program as a springboard to becoming a professional chef. Uh, actually, one of my second years, I went to apply to a sushi restaurant. She went in with her portfolio, pictures of sushi we'd done in class, and she just wanted to be a prep cook. And they, she, she showed it to them, and they're like, do you want to be a sushi chef? Because this, this looks pretty good. So a lot of it's just about them finding kind of their passion and dedication. Some of them want to bake cakes, and so we focus on that. Some of them want to do some other things, so we focus on that. And they can really kind of round out those skills. I feel like that's a good transition to the Glacier Grill. A lot of people probably don't know that these students actually run a functioning restaurant at the Skills Center. Absolutely. It is a full working restaurant. So we have a restaurant license. We have a catering license. It is a restaurant in the same sense that any other restaurant is a restaurant. We kind of think of ourselves as a fast casual restaurant. So it is kind of counter service. Nobody's waiting tables or anything like that. But really, it is 100% student run. Myself and my uh, other chef, Chef Eliza, we really are here to guide the students. There is a passing period when we don't usually have as many students. So during those periods, like we're out there maintaining it for them. But otherwise, it's on them. From day one, they start crafting the menu. Our first trimester menu this year, we actually asked them to all pick out dishes that were significant to them in some way for the fall or autumn season. So some picked family recipes, some things were cultural, some were just kind of fond memories. And we actually worked with them then on crafting a menu around those things. And then they cook everything, prepare everything, package everything, reheat everything, serve everything, work with the customers. We really kind of train them up on all those pieces because that is kind of the goal is for them to go out and actually know how the restaurant runs. So you've been here for six plus years now. What's been the most satisfying part of your job up to this point? Probably the most satisfying thing is just at the end of every year, just seeing kind of how each kid's grown. And it's going to be different for each one. You know, again, some kids come in, they want to work in restaurants and be a chef. Some it's like, man, you're gonna be able to go home, open up your fridge and just make something for yourself. And like, that's a great life skill to have going forward. But it is great every year to just have those moments. We do this with the students is looking back and saying, you guys remember week three when we made mac and cheese and you guys all ruined it and it was terrible. And like, we couldn't eat any of it because it tasted so bad. And now you guys are making Thai iced coffee parfaits and are using like molecular gastronomy to spherify sweetened coffee and things like that. And you know what all that means, right? Like that's pretty cool to like see them, like them get the satisfaction, them see their growth from it. And then kind of from the business standpoint, seeing like the continued growth of the business. I mean, we've gone from, you know, our staff would come and eat here to the staff and the students would come and eat here to we have like regulars who come in every week from the public and are eating out of the uh, out of the restaurant and that's really satisfying because it's really I think showing kind of the quality of what these students can do 16 17 years old and they're creating food that people are like coming back for and I think again for them that's super satisfying is watching them see other people eat their food and be excited and enjoy it and having that feeling of having shared that passion. The Glacier Grill is such a cool part of the Bethel community. I've actually eaten there a few times, and I can tell you the food is top-notch. So, Connor, along with talking with Chef Witten, you also got a chance to talk with two second-year students in the culinary program, Nat and Valerie, about what they enjoy about cooking and running the Glacier Grill. Typical, like, high school culinary programs, you don't really do this. I mean, we, like, serve to the public. We serve to, like, staff and students. And I find that really interesting because we get, like, best of both worlds. You know, like, we're a class, we're learning. And at the same time, we're getting, like, business experience and learning how that works. I really like how the cafe is, like, an actual, like, business. We're not getting paid because, obviously, we're students here. But it's, like, an actual, like, business. Like, a, you know, if I was working in a cafe, this is how it would be. And I really like the, the family we're creating here at Culinary. I like how the chefs make us push our limits with creativity with foods put our brains to work, create like fuge dishes, which I really enjoy. And like working with techniques, like cooking techniques, I think that that's so cool. You're in your second year of the program now. Could you see yourself pursuing a career in the culinary arts? I've always enjoyed cooking and baking. I have a personal passion for it. So, you know, this class with everything I've learned, everything I've just experimented with and such, you know, I definitely see myself pursuing this you know, like type of career in the future. Great interview, Connor. I loved hearing the student voices over there at the Pierce County Skills Center. What a great resource for our kids. It really is, and we wish you all a happy and healthy Thanksgiving. Connor, Connor, wait a second. You know there's one more thing that's awesome about Thanksgiving, and that's leftovers. You don't mean... I do. We did it before. Let's do it again. We're going to end with some bloopers from this week's show. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Connor, Connor, you know what I love about Thanksgiving? Going back for seconds. So how about we get a second? How about we get a second? Boy, I wrote this too. 
all this talk about Thanksgiving Day food. My mouth's already watering, and I hope yours is dry, Connor, because you've got some impersonations to do. That's a weird thing to say. Last week, listeners will remember that we promised if they wrote in their favorite dishes, we would have Connor do impersonations. Impressions. Same thing? I think so. We would have Connor do impersonations of famous Hollywood celebrities reading those requests, those reading those recipes, reading those, what are they? Words. Words. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me, let me take it from the top. Okay. All right, from the top. Hey, everybody. I'm Doug. This is Connor. <laughs> not that top. Oh, not that far top. Okay. This one comes from an anonymous Bethelonian who obviously doesn't want to be associated with this nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> That's really good. And they said their favorite Thanksgiving food is not a turkey. <laughs> <laughs> I like the stuffing. No, okay. What's the, okay? I gotta. I need to have like a one good sentence here. Oh, before the. It's not no, a, no. I, I, I'll start with it's not a turkey. It's not a turkey. It's not a turkey. <laughs> I like the pumpkin pie. <laughs> That's really good. <laughs> okay, sorry, sorry. That was great. <laughs> hey. How you doing? Okay, okay. Okay, okay. I've okay, okay. I've got oh. <laughs> How many okays are there? It's a lot of okay. We're all okay. You're right. Everybody's okay. Okay. <laughs> Hi ho! It's not easy being green, and that's why I appreciate the green bean casserole that my mom used to make. It's my favorite. Ah! Wow! Great Wilford Brimley. <laughs> 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 